fun. Okay. Okay.
Okay. Okay. Hello everybody, before we get started as always I want to give a shout out to the lovely music we've been listening to during pre-stream here. This is Dreamer by Declan DP. You can find the information in the lower left hand corner of the screen. Thank you to Declan and everybody like them who makes other free to use or low cost assets for us streamers so we can have better streams. Thank you very much. Haha. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever it is in your part of the world. I am Deus Kane, variety type streamer for the night. And tonight, we're going to be playing some more Tavern Talk. It's a visual novel style game. It's into the fantasy universe. We make drinks in a tavern. It's basically coffee talk, but like ye medieval coffee talk. <laughs> it's fun. It's a visual novel. Hopefully, I'll remember all the voices because it's been it's been a few weeks since I've done this. In case you missed last night's stream, well, in case you missed a couple of my updates, um, yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't been streaming as much the last few weeks, because I was taking a break, because I hit that burnout thing pretty hard, so, you know, decided to take a little bit of time off, take care of myself, and now I'm back with a different schedule, we're going to be doing Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays, and I'm taking the weekends off to actually have some time off for myself. Small change for schedule. You're still going to get the same number of streams, just they're going to be on different days. So, yeah. <clears throat> but, as always, we usually do a little bit of chatty chatty before we start to do the stream. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of that today. I had a funny experience today when I, uh, at lunchtime. So, normally, I, I work from home, like, four days a week. I go into the office one day, and usually that's the day when I, like, go out to eat and get something. Because, um... You know, I'm usually like running around late or something like that. And I'm just like, oh, I don't have time. I'm just going to go out and buy something for lunch. Well, recently I'm like, you know, there's a bunch of nice restaurants in my area. There's like that one hibachi place. 
I'm gonna go there for lunch today and I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna get some sunshine, I'm gonna... The Hibachi place was closed. It is closed on Tuesday every week. It is the only day of the week. They're closed. I probably should have checked this before I drove there, but I, I was surprised that they would close on a Tuesday. I don't know why, but they were. I'm like, okay, you know what? Uh, there's like the local, the local grocery store has like Chinese food in it. I'm gonna just go get some of that. It's, I know they have a lunch special. I can get a, a bunch of food for fairly cheap. It's gonna be great. So I'm driving towards there and I'm almost there and I'm like, oh wait, no, there's not like that one pizza buffet in this like shopping, shopping like strip mall area. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go there. I haven't eaten there in a while. Then they have dessert pizzas, which are amazing. Yes. I, I park near and I'm walking up. I'm like, it says they're open. There's signs saying open every day. All the lights are off. Well, this isn't good. And, and I get up towards the door and they are closed. <laughs> or I should say they are open every day. That is correct. They open at four o'clock. <laughs> And <laughs> they open at 4 p.m. So I'm there at like noon and I'm like, I'm not getting pizza, I guess. So I, I went and got my Chinese food. It was my first draft pick. And um, I had that for lunch with, uh, since it was a grocery store, I was able to get like a bunch of other things. I got like a thing of Pocky for a snack. And I also got like a Mexican cane sugar soda, which is delicious. And I couldn't finish all of my Chinese food. I got chicken and broccoli with pork fried rice. And uh, usually they stuff like a bunch of broccoli in it and I'm okay with that. This time the broccoli was not that good. And it was not much chicken at all. So it was a little disappointing and I ended up not being able to eat all the rice. And I just was in a food coma for like the first part of the afternoon. Cause I was, I was struggling to get those last few bites in and I don't remember the next hour afterwards. <laughs> I suspect I was not very productive at work. I tried, but um, the food coma, she came and she came hard. Uh, I will have to go to that hibachi place later though. Cause it's, I haven't been there in ages. And I know they do like a lunch special too, or at least they used to. A lot of my food knowledge and my like restaurant knowledge is from like pre COVID times. I haven't really like checked out all the places since then. So. I shall have to explore. Check out the things and the places and the stuff. Also, just since my background is messed up, I'm gonna fix that. And boop. there we go. Also, I just noticed here, uh, the V Neon. Thank you for the follow. I'm pretty sure I know who you are. You are friend. You are friend shaped. Also, another writer. So, huzzah! <laughs> but yeah, that was my, my big adventure of the day because the rest of the day I was working. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh... It's an interesting thing of, like, trying to figure out how to talk about work. Actually, I have one, I have one fun story from work today. Because um, yesterday was just basically, like, a normal day. Um... <clears throat> But today I had, uh, I, uh, last week I had a ticket for somebody, their monitor wasn't working. And I, I should explain, I should take a step back. I work in IT. I do customer, uh, IT customer support for a company. And I got a, a ticket passed to me last week. Somebody's monitor wasn't acting, was, was acting up, wasn't working. <clears throat> so I called them, I talked to them about it. I analyzed the situation and... Yeah, it's it. Her computer's just not seeing the monitor, and it sounded like the monitor is pretty old. So I'm like, you know what? We'll just have you order a replacement. I helped her fill out the paperwork to get that, and I told her, you know what? It should be here in like a day or two, because they usually overnight this stuff. And she's like, oh, that's wonderful. Could I have two so they match? I'm like, I'm, I'm not the one who approves it. So sure, we, we I can help you ask for two of them. Um, so they're both the same size, like you want. And I did. And I put in. The, I helped her put in her paperwork. And I got a message from her today. Now this, this was like Thursday of last week. I told her that we put it in. It was like Thursday morning. So it, she really should have had it by now, but she messaged me today saying, I still don't have it. I, I never showed up. I'm like, okay, what's going on? What's, what, what's your ticket number for 
the the hardware request because you had, I had to put a different type of ticket in because businesses are very, very picky for audit reasons about the type of paperwork you have to put in for IT tickets. Um, so I got the number, I looked it up, and <clears throat> essentially when you when you file like a hardware request, it comes in as a certain type of ticket, which then creates a sub-ticket. And that sub-ticket needs like approvals and stuff, and then it finally goes and creates another subtype of ticket called a task, and that task is operated by the people that actually process the work. So the work takes place in the task, but they're the two levels above it. So she gave me the top level, I looked at the middle level, and there's no task. There's no task associated with it at all. And I check, and it's pending approval by somebody. Now, rule number one of any kind of technical support in any kind of business sense, never give someone's name. Never say, oh, it's Bob Johnson who, who's holding this up because they're just gonna go and call Bob Johnson. Um, they're just gonna give Bob a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't you don't ever give them somebody's name, especially if that somebody's a coworker. Uh, if it's if it is a coworker, you're like, oh, I recognize it. It's assigned to a coworker. Let me give them a call. Me myself, give them a call. I'm not gonna let you, the customer, do it because you're you're just I'm not doing that. Um, so I saw a name on the ticket and is waiting for approval. And I don't remember what the name was. I'm gonna call them Michael, Michael something. Doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> so I tell the customer, okay, I found what the problem is. Your initial ticket got submitted. It created a second level ticket that needs approval. And we're waiting on approval from somebody. I'm going to dig in a little bit here, see if we can't get, figure out why this wasn't approved. Um, and then we'll try and get this process today. And she goes, oh, great. Thank you for telling me this. Uh, when you figure it out, let me know. And also CC my boss, Michael something. And I went, uh, well, this makes it easy then because I'm waiting for his approval. <laughs> so it's her boss that was the one that needed to approve it still. Um, and that's the whole reason why it wasn't done. <laughs> uh, she's like, ah, why is this so complicated? I'm like, oh, this is just, just paperwork, lady. <laughs> it's paperwork. And everybody wants to make sure everything's approved. I'm not just not sending stuff out. Um, <laughs> so I got her sorted. Uh, but it was just funny of, of like, oh, I can't tell you the name. Okay, let me know when Michael, or let me know, let me, let me and Michael know. I'm like, oh, <laughs> actually, I will give you the name now because it's Michael. Michael's the one. Go get him. <laughs> it, was a, it was your boss. And it's, it's just, it amused me to no end. It, I love it. I love it so much. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's situations like that that make my job fun sometimes because other times it's like you know you people are stressed or they're upset and it can be a little bit of a, a unpleasant interaction uh, but every now and again you get something funny like that and you're just like i'm gonna i'm gonna remember this for a while <laughs> oh man give me one sec my leg's been bothering me or not even the leg like the ankle has been bothering me the last few days and I'm wondering if it's like I'm sitting weird or something like pinching a nerve in the back of my leg I don't know I, mean, I got a CD seat for my chair actually that just sounds silly and ridiculous anyway um otherwise yeah it's it's been not too bad at work despite being in IT I did not really have anything to uh to do for resolving that whole Cloud strike, crowd strike, the thing on Friday that broke the whole world's internet for a while. Not the internet, but broke everybody's uh, like Microsoft systems for a while. Uh, the update that wasn't good. Uh, my my department basically had nothing to do with that. <laughs> we had nothing to fix. We had nothing to repair. Um, by the sounds of it, uh, like as soon as. Uh, as soon as like they detected a problem, people called in the middle of the night to like contact the guys that would need to like patch this to roll back the change. And apparently they did that like immediately. And they were able to like undo a lot of the problems like early, early in the morning. And I, I don't know if any of our end users got affected by it at all. Which, for those wondering, end user is the uh, IT term to describe the person using the computer and not the person who's fixing the computer. Um, the user at the end of the the chain. 
Um, <clears throat> so I don't know if any of our end users were really directly affected by like blue screens because they would have they would have just they would not have been able to get into these things. That that's from my understanding, the solution involves like bypassing encryption, starting the computer in safe mode, going into a file that would almost certainly require admin access and deleting one very specific file. And if you delete anything else in that location, it's going to really fuck up the computer. So I'm glad that didn't really be a problem. That wasn't really a problem for us. Um, I think they fixed like the server side stuff and, and that was it. We had some applications that went down. Like people would use like web-based stuff or applications that had like a, a database on the server and the servers might've been down, but the actual programs themselves, like most of our stuff was up and running, which was really, really, really good. Cause otherwise it's really, really, really bad. So. And it looks like Steam hasn't shit the bed. Hmm. Hmm. So I probably need to like stop being invisible on Steam. But yeah, I'm kind of checking Steam status now to make sure that we aren't offline. Because usually they do patching on Tuesdays. This is going to be kind of a weird week in terms of like which games we're playing when. I'm probably going to be doing Tavern Talk on a Monday. But this week, just because of the way things lined up, uh, I wanted to do last night's stream to be the catch-up one for that. And then I also had uh, Buckshot Roulette that I wanted to play. Because I got it in a recent... Uh, I think it's like near the end of the Steam Summer Sale, or maybe even a little bit after, but it was still like super discounted. And I'm like, I want to play this right away. I don't want to wait. I'm going to do it for my first stream back. <clears throat> and I did. And I went 3-0 and for like matches. Like not even just like three wins in a row, like three, three rounds. Three entire matches. Nine rounds, no losses. And I'm like, I'm quitting while I'm ahead. Because there were a few I was just like at the edge of dying. And then the de I'm like, the dealer just has to shoot me once. And the dealer turns around and shoots himself. And I'm like, how? Oh, I think that happened twice. Where I just, I made some bad calls in the early rounds. I'm like, this is where I die. And the dealer shoots himself. And I'm like, this is amazing. I can't believe I lived. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh my goodness. But. I'm actually going to check and see if Steam has any issues at the moment. It's not what I want. Check. <laughs> Baseline for is Steam down, 17. Reported things for is Steam down at 6.09 p.m. 5,963 reports. Yeah, it, it went down for maintenance briefly. Um, I don't think I have this one. Crocroft? One of these times I'm gonna have to play like a Pokemon game on stream. Maybe when the next one comes out. but I'll take it. Yeah. Just trying to make sure. Since I'm going to try to do the game streams more of like Mondays and Fridays and then Tuesdays are going to be more of like chatting because Steam does what it does. <clears throat> but yeah, we should be good. I'm looking right at it. There it is. Yeah, I caught that one too. Nice. Alright, 
So let's get the game started. And we're going to tap the button. It's launching. Synchronizing cloud. Or maybe it's not synchronizing cloud. And there we go. Last played, we got this backwards. I was on the 6th of July. So the very British people. Autosave at 14.39. That should be fine. This is like a second later. Act 2, Starlight Sonata. Part 10, Twin Flames, the eighth day of the Astral Moon. I think the last time we met, like, a moss lady. Also, they've done some updates to the game since then. They said they're gonna, like, spice up the drink orders so that everything's not the same. And I think they also said... They were changing up some of the papers. So now it's not the paper doesn't match up. There's actually a little bit more uh, like difficulty to like stuff here. Which sucks because the paper thing was what let me know previously like what did and didn't work. Uh, capital is wrapped in roots protected by the divine. Spinal rhinoceros. Spawning the worst of it all, budget discussions, unusual amount of undead, and I think these two were related, the banshee ones. Gleek stalkers. Okay. Hey, innkeeper. Hello. It's been a while since you've been, I've seen you around. A whole week, to be exact. Did you miss me already? A little. Cute. Got my hands on a job, all the way over in Deria. Seems like something relatively easy, but well paid. Or like something too good to be true. Not this time. Apparently the farmer just wanted it to be done quickly, so she offered a higher than average rate. Sounds like easy money. Yeah, I wish. You know, I think I could use a drink first. Something will bring back my usual speed and agility. I feel like this job drained me of all my energy. Only if I get to hear the rest of the story. Sounds like a good deal to me. She wants speed. I feel like I just got another speed drink. No, I didn't. That's the one I'm missing. I have two brain drinks. Two shield drinks. I think I have three charisma drinks? Yeah, the Thousand Winds and the Sunny Breeze are both... Okay. So, this is the only one that's got a lot of speed. I think literally the thing they at said they were adding to the system was fewer swift strikes. That's literally the first one I get. Let's hope this suits your tastes. The drinks never disappoint. Why were you looking down at that point? Glad to hear it. Also, why did the music get weird there? This is ominous. What the actual fuck? I can feel, definitely feel my senses coming back to me. I made you a drink. Now it's your turn. Tell me about your latest job. 
fine. A deal's a deal. Judge the client's a farmer, right? Judge a large flock of two-headed sheep. Apparently, that darn starfall damaged their barn. They somehow managed to break out of their enclosure. Didn't think they were that clever, honestly. Must be the two. Br must be the two brains. Probably. Anyways, they got out right before their shearing appointment. And of course, the farmer needs to get them back in time. Especially considering the rumors surrounding Deria at the moment. Seems to be a dangerous place nowadays. Apparently, an unusual amount of cattle have been gone missing these past few weeks. So local folks have been keeping a closer eye on their flocks and on their locks and fences. Rumor unlocked danger zone. Of course, the farmer wanted her sheep to be safe, so she hired someone to bring her animals back. That someone being you. Obviously. I thought to myself, I'm a monster hunter. Handling animals is basically my job. I'd say a monster hunter is rather known for, well, hunting instead of handling. And that was exactly the issue. Do you know how stubborn two-headed sheep are? Let me guess, they're twice as stubborn as one-headed sheep? You got it. They're impossible to get moving, impossible to startle. One hand might be eating and the other one is always watching you. But you did, right? That's a fact you wouldn't be here if you hadn't finished the job. You're absolutely correct. I was at my wit's end. Imagine having fought hundreds if not thousands of beasts. And some sheep are the one enemy I can't win against. That sounds like an incredibly humbling experience. It was. But luckily I got some help. Another adventurer saw me struggling and offered her assistance and knowledge. Or I should say, a retired adventurer. Oh? Yeah, she was very insistent on that label. Some kind of astral finfolk? Must have lost her arm a while ago. Oh no. Back to the sheep. She told me there's apparently one thing that gets their full attention. You got any guesses on what that magical tool might be? I have no... Clovers! Morning dew clovers, to be precise. They go absolutely feral for them. A few will make them eager... To... A few will make them follow every step of your... every single one of your commands. But someone with your experience should know that, innkeeper. Do you know each other? Barely. Ha! Keep her secrets then. Oh, so mysterious, innkeeper. I went to buy her a drink after she helped me out back there. Didn't expect you two to be best friends, honestly. Best friends? I think you got that one wrong, Jade. I'd never befriended someone like him. I have tastes. Well, that was unnecessarily rude of you, Una. You didn't even consider my feelings. Consider me sorry, innkeep. Apology accepted. Speaking of taste, what about your drinks? I know you always like to experiment with potions and other suspicious liquids. I think you finally made it, huh? Indeed, I think I got the hang of it. What are you waiting for? Your old rival's waiting for a drink. Preferably one that'll restore my energy. Those sheep made my old bones all wobbly and I don't like feeling so weak. Gotcha. Let's see what that old magic has to offer. Don't worry, he may not look like look it, but his drinks are actually really good. I bet! I'll just take that as a compliment, I suppose. Jesus. Our old friends are coming out of the woodwork. So she wants strength. No, oh, fuck it, Sailor's Courage. This is not good. That doesn't help. That's fine. So, splash of this. Dash of that. And two portions of you.
Oh, wow! Impressed? Don't get cocky now. You don't have to be shy. You can just admit I've improved. So, Una, Jay told me you're retired now? Had enough of the adventuring business? Absolutely. Don't have anything to do with that anymore. I've completed enough quests for at least two lifetimes. And yet you decided to help Jade. Ever had to handle two-headed sheep? Not yet. Lucky you. Lucky indeed. I could just watch you struggle with those stubborn beasts any longer, but this is a one-time exception! Did the farmer pay accordingly after your morning dew clover's magic trick? Oh, absolutely. She was so happy, she gratefully paid both of us. That's good to hear. She even tipped us with some gems she supposedly found in one of her fields. But I'm my... Mida? I don't have any use for stones like those. And since I'm retired, I couldn't care less about material riches. So we figured we'd give them to you instead. But I wouldn't tell that pretentious blonde dragon priestess if I were you. Feels like a blasphemous gift. Fusion material? Oh, divine gems. A little blasphemous indeed. I think I know just the right way to use them. Thank you. Don't mention it. Now that we're done here, I can finally go back to crocheting for the rest of my life. Didn't get this hook put on for nothing. Of course, last occasion I gotta rip some youngsters off while playing cards. I haven't lost the game in at least four decades. That's remarkable. Or impossible for someone who's only playing fair. I think your lucky streak will end with me today. I've also never lost the game in at least a decade. Are you challenging me to a duel? Oh, absolutely. And whoever loses has to pay for the next round of drinks. That's the spirit! I like you, bounty hunter. Don't come crying to me after I annihilate you. <laughs> you wish. Jade, be on guard. You worried about me? Cute. I just know for a fact that Una is a master at cheating. I doubt that's changed. So you're saying you lost against her? More than once, yes. Pathetic. Hey, are you talking about me? Listen, Inkeep, if your opponent is obviously cheating like she was, you can't beat them fair and square. You gotta beat them at cheating. Now watch how a real master does it. Gently giant. Oh, hey, look at that guy. Oh, he's blushing. He's adorable. Good day. I have returned, innkeeper. Welcome back, Miss Anwar, and welcome... This brave adventurer's name is Claymore. He offered unexpected support during my quest. I'm happy to hear that. Thank you so much on behalf of, um... The world. Yes, of course, the world, Mr. Clay. You don't need to do the whole Mr. Th I don't know, what voice do I want to do for this guy? You don't want to, you don't need to do the whole Mr. Thing. Just Clay is alright with me. Otherwise, it sounds so formal. Like talking to one of those graph people. Oh, you wouldn't want to be one of those? Clay it is, then. Can I offer you both a drink in exchange for the story of how you two met? That would be a fun trade, right to you? I think I would welcome it as well. Then what can I get you? Clay, please go ahead. Oh my. I have a lot of stuff. You've got a lot of stuff on the menu. How about one of those drinks with ingredients? You look strong. How about something extra for those muscles? That sounds nice. Let's go with that. One minute. Just do charisma down, but the rest of them go up. Uh, let's give him a southern brawler.
try this, I think it might knock your socks off. This day's strong and magic-y. My socks are still on. Still, I love it. I'll have to remember this one for next time. What is it called? Don't worry, I'll remember it for you. Thank you! Now, Miss Anwar, what would you like? I need some of that liquid vigilance. Even in here, it's important to stay on guard. Wouldn't this be the right time to relax? There is no such time. Alright. Then I shall aid you on your divine mission of not falling asleep standing. Defense? Defense. First snow. Okay. So this is definitely an infused drink. Not that. Oh, tell me I can use this. No. Uh, I can use one of these, right? Yeah. And it's a splash of green and a whole bunch of blue. First snow. Some liquid vigilance diluted with some delicious secret ingredients. Enjoy. I could do with some less diluted, but you're right. It's delicious. Happy to hear that. Do we get to tell the story now? Please, go ahead. You think I should start with the seashells? No, I think some exposition is in order first. As you already know, Innkeeper, I plan to start my investigation right here in Zenith, specifically at the local Gaia Temple. So I've been told. Mostly about that wobbling ooze. Ah, yes, that was certainly something. Unfortunately, besides their fascinating personal personal secrets they had nothing of value to share with me but fortunately thanks to the rumors i was not entirely without a lead the wizard's prophecy led me to dalwell or should i say the abandoned isle or fairweather the name changes depending on who you ask i didn't know it had that many names i always just called it kelpie island why because it's shaped like one probably the smartest approach Kelpie Island or Fairweather, its name means very little to me. It's a local settlement of Fay was much more relevant. They built everything into a, the giant sequoia that holds their portal to Avalon. Their portal is in the tree. Yes, right in its center. They called it the Horizon Tree. It's beautiful. The Fay themselves were moderately helpful. It was difficult to get them to focus on the severity of the situation. I was pretty sure they were preparing some sort of morbid ritual with acorns they were stirring up between those rose bushes in asymmetrical shapes. Oh, stringing up. <coughs> oh, I always thought those were art projects. Common misconception. It sounds more like they were preparing to charge them with astral moonlight. For what? If you freeze them, they make good ice cubes. Do you participate in such practices? Not at the moment. I'm just not going to question that. Eventually, I got them to sit still long enough to ask them about any strange occurrences around their settlement. Did they understand your definition of strange? After some explanation. They told me about how recently an astral humpback whale had rampaged through one of their nearby scouting camps. Just two days before the stars fell. That it seemed, said it seemed like it was running from something, that it was full of seething fury. They also claimed it to be a good sign, because it promised adventure. Seems like an understatement. Majorly. I mean, it did end up with some kind of adventure. 
Investigating disaster is not an adventure. It's a, necess it's a necessity of dire circumstances. Well, I had fun. And that makes two of us. It certainly was a sign of something being awry, and I was determined to get to the bottom of it. So naturally, I made, way, I made my way to the nearby Carapace Beach and prepared a celestial summoning ritual under the young astral moon. For the humpback whale, I suppose? What else would I be summoning? I thought maybe you wanted to ask Cassiopeia for her input. Are you out of your mind? The Realm Keepers have sworn a divine oath of neutrality that prevents them from directly interfering with the simple world of us mortals. The full might of their powers could disrupt the delicate balance of their cosmic design. Right, sorry, slipped my mind. You are forgiven. As I was preparing the ritual, readying myself to confront the troublemaker, I suddenly found myself being interrupted by a strange request. There was me. I asked her if she needed any more seashells. Did she? I did, actually. Pairing dragon head tritons and flimmering limpet shells can heighten the dual aspect of the celestial twins. Therefore, making the connection to the astral sea more stable. Obviously. I hadn't managed to find a limpet shell, and one happened to be among his offerings. I honestly thought she was decorating the beach and that she could use with more color. You weren't wrong in any way. Sadly, the shells burned up during the ritual. Singed Tia's hands, too. Just a little. Fortunately, I possess the spectacular healing capabilities. Fortunate indeed. Were you collecting seashells for the beach decorating... For beach... Were you collecting seashells for beach decorating? Or for your very own ritual, Clay? I was collecting them for my friends. At this time of year, Kelpie Island is full of all kinds of sparkling, floating animals from the Astral Sea. And they love munching on seashells. Do you encounter these creatures a lot? I try to. They're really nice. Clay can talk to animals. Gaia's blessings rest upon him. Well, you're full of surprises. Thank you. Though I'm not always sure they like talking to me. They tend to disappear sooner or later. Sometimes they come back, but often they don't. I think maybe I accidentally say things that upset them without realizing it, and then they think I mean to hurt them. I hate when that happens. You mean they just disappear like they were never there? Yeah, like they move to a different, quieter beach. Or like they return to the Astral Sea, Clay. I feel like they would have told me if they went back home. Not necessarily. Many Australian creatures can traverse the plains at will. They don't always have control over when they return. On many occasions, the astral currents pull them back home before they're ready. And once you're swept up in them, each subsequent journey out becomes more and more difficult. Or so I've been told. I would guess your friends either went home when, they, when you weren't there or got pulled back before they had a chance to say goodbye. So you're saying the sea swallowed them? Not quite, just specking them home. Through a celestial hug of sorts? So that means I could just visit them in the Astral Sea? That would be an incredible undertaking. Traveling between planes is quite hazardous. It is? But the Echoes are from the Primordial Sea and my family has lived there for quite a while, I think. They must have gotten here somehow. They say it's much simpler to travel between the planes once. But for a long time it's been almost impossible without complicated and dangerous rituals. Until recently, the Astral Sea was only possible the only possible way to pass through the barriers. And accessing it requires meticulous planning. Not to mention the sea tends to come with more risks than rewards. Even your Astrian friends who can choose to leave their home plane on a whim get pulled back by the currents eventually. Imagine what would happen to you if you went in unprepared. But the Fae on Kelpie Island aren't from Gaia either, and they told me they haven't lived here for very long. Since the five interplanetary portals opened up, interplanetary, interplanetary travel has become a lot more accessible again. At least when it comes to the dream planes. 
but even the astral and primordial seas, not to mention Ur, are finally open to us again after all these years. It's a true miracle to witness in our lifetimes. So the portals haven't always been there? I didn't know that. Who put them there? Well, that is a very good question. It was me, wasn't it? And one that would blow the scope of this conversation beyond its bounds, I would think. You still have to tell me how that's summoning. About. You still have to tell me how you summoned that whale. You're right, we're getting off track. As Clay and I talked, he told me that his fascinating friendship with the astral creatures and his ability to speak with animals as if they share a language. So you asked him for help? Well, I. He offered his aid, and I certainly could have handled it on my own, but. But you didn't have to! Right. That, obviously. And thank you very much, Clay. Anytime. So I summoned it. The ritual worked exceptionally well, and it appeared out of the sky in a wave of concerning darkness. Stars used to accompany them. I mean, there was one star. Oh, wrong voice. Yeah, that, that wasn't too bad. There was. The whale was even bigger than I had anticipated. Almost as tall as the horizon tree. And in its stomach rested a giant sun, the only star of the night sky, whose light had not been extinguished, nestled right in its belly. That sounds beautiful. It was, in a way. The star wasn't the only thing to worry about, though. The whale didn't look all, at all happy about it being summoned. And instead, it looked like a wounded animal that was one loud noise away from lashing out. And it looked sick. Its translucent skin was gray, like it was frozen in the coldest of the highest mountains or the deepest depths. Its eyes were pale, almost blind, with no warmth within them. I thought for a brief second we must fight this beast before it consumes us and everything in its path. But when I looked over at Clay, I saw a deep understanding in his eyes, like he wasn't seeing a monster, but a friend. So I stayed quiet, knowing that whatever he knew outweighed my fear. You knew what it needed, Clay? Not completely, but I knew that look in its eyes. That feeling you get when you're so scared you get angry, when you want to fight, but you're terrified you won't be able to, uh, flee. So I kneeled to show it that I didn't mean any harm, and I held out my last conch shell in my hands. It took a moment to overcome the instinct to mistrust, and then it picked the shell up and gently ate it. I saw the conch freeze as it was swallowed. It looked painful. Wanting to comfort the whale, I reached out and carefully put my hands against its cheek. I wanted it to know it wasn't alone. I'm sure it needed that. It did. It was so sad it cried tears of golden dust. Its tears turned to ice before they even hit the ground. It was at that moment I realized its body had been cursed with a potent frostbite. I knew it did not trust me yet, so I thought what possibly... What I possibly would ha would not have thought possible. I did what I previously would not have thought possible. Through hand on Clay's shoulder and the aid of your drink, I was able to briefly transfer my magic into Clay, allowing him to cure it of its disease. He kissed it on the forehead, and the ice burned away, freeing it of the endless chill. It was quite sweet. And that's one lucky whale. And one unusual effect of that infusion. Is that not usually possible? Inspiration is a fickle thing. Such magic is deeply personal and differs from person to person. I always enjoy seeing how others imagine support to look like. Dear support was really helpful. I'd hope so. Once free of its pain, the whale was ready to talk to us. I asked what had happened, and it told me about fighting some sort of evil creature on two legs. A creature on two legs? So humanoid, then? We assume. It turns out whales don't care much about our appearances. You cared more about all the things being thrown at it. What a mean way to approach a whale. Apparently, it swallowed some kind of stone. It could only remember that it's black and white color and that it tasted horrible. But I thought, I have a strong digestive system. Oh, he thought I have a strong digestive system. It's nothing to worry about. 
Rookie mistake. The two-legged monster wouldn't stop attacking, so it fled as quickly as it could, trying to find its way home. It felt really bad about destroying the camp. I get why. The worst part of being angry is seeing the wreckage you leave behind. Tia, do you ever get angry? No, I am the embodiment of calmness and self-discipline. You forgot divinity. Thank you, I did. Luckily, its anger subsided when it found its way back. It thought it was finally safe, but... Suddenly, this freezing cold began. I don't mind the cold much. I'm from the Highlands, and we get a lot of snow in the winter. But the kind of cold it was describing sounded awful. Painful and inescapable, like it was freezing from the inside out. The potent frostbite I mentioned, it seemed the curse took cold and slowly spread throughout its entire body. It tried to warm itself by feeding on solar crabs and cosmic squid, but that didn't help much. It just kept getting more scared and angrier and colder. Until even its brain was freezing over it. I couldn't think of anything other than that cold. So in its desperation, it ate the hottest thing it could find. A star. A star. A giant one at that. It looked deceptively small contained in its belly. But apparently it's one of the biggest ones the night sky, to o night sky had to offer. The East Star. It ate Pharos. The guiding star of the endless seas? It did, and it helped. It kept its frostbite at bay, even if it didn't eradicate it. But as you can imagine, such a massive star disappearing did not have the most desirable effect on the Astral Sea's delicate balance of gravity. I could imagine that. The whale was really confused about what had happened. But it said all the stars around it suddenly started to fall and spin out of place. They crashed into each other, causing more and more destruction with each passing moment. It didn't under I didn't understand everything until it just it I didn't understand everything it described, but it sounded bad. To label it as bad would be quite an understatement. The falling stars ripped holes in Cassiopeia's wings. To think just one hungry creature could break the entire balance of the universe. It was hurt and scared. It should have endured instead of hurting others. It was alone. It didn't know all that would happen. It didn't. I'm sure it tried its best. Its best wasn't good enough. The whale isn't responsible for the horrible things that were done to it. We should celebrate you were able to help it instead of blaming it for its pain. I think so too. Did you also manage to free it of the star in its stomach? No, the frostbite may have gone, but that star is part of it now. It has become the first of a new kind, a sun humpback whale. And probably the last one, too, as all of the stars in the Astral Sea have been snuffed out. But we'll never be able to see the night sky again, and in turn that whale must forever live with its guilt nestled in its stomach. You're right. Some things are forever changed now. That's kind of the point of disasters. But perhaps the star doesn't stand for shame, but the pride of its survival. We shouldn't be sad that most are gone, but happy that one managed to make it through. Besides, we may have lost the night sky's starry companions, but we managed to gain two new friends. Even the worst of situations can lead you to light sometimes. I like that. You should never be sad about finding new friends. Speaking of friends, on the way back we ran into this traveling souvenir shop. I bought friendship bracelets for Tia and I with little whale charms on them. But she didn't want to wear them just yet, so I'm waiting until she's ready. And that's very nice of you, right, Tia? I'm just... They're a hazard for fights and can get caught on things. Sure. I'm looking forward to seeing how they look with your armor. Tia also found something for you at the souvenir shop. That's... She said it reminded her of your tavern. And now that I've seen it in person, I agree. Now I'm curious. What is it? Oh, that's a very pretty mosaic. The shopkeeper told us a little bit about it. 
Supposedly this piece of art represents a new beginning after a hard-fought battle. I kind of like the rise of the sun, hunchba the sun hunchbacked whale. That's very fitting. Thank you, Tia. So... Tia, aren't you glad Clay was there to help you? I suppose I am. You really are? You're surprisingly competent. Perhaps one might even say I could not have done this entirely without you. If one was to be extreme about it. I think someone like you could do anything alone if you put your mind to it. But that doesn't mean you should have to. I'm always happier when doing difficult things if I have help from other people. Well said, Clay. Stellar teamwork, you two. Keep it up. Will do. Much more importantly, clearly our quest was not successful. What are you talking about? You cured the sun humpback whale, you found why the stars fell, and you even made new friends. What more could you want? We still haven't the slightest clue about who caused this. An angry humanoid figure? And exactly who is that? Hmm. Well, we can rule out you, me, and the innkeeper. We can rule out you and me. Oh. That hurts. And that's the ad break. Alright, I am going to BRB and get rid of something to help my throat feel a bit better because it's, it's not doing well tonight.
Okay, we are back, and I have a throat lozenge. So, huzzah! <laughs> No hard feelings. I believe you're innocent, but sometimes evil hides in plain sight. One must not be led astray. Also, to make sure you can rule out me, the innkeeper. You know, I didn't. I didn't continue on anything beyond that. I understand. Paranoia is a hard habit to break. Clearly, someone orchestrated this. It seems too random and methodical to have been an accidental side effect. I must find out what hides in the darkness. If something like this happens again, it could end in a calamity the likes of which we've never seen before. Ah, don't worry about it, girly. This is just some kind of... This is just kind of how oblivions are around here. I wouldn't just call this another oblivion. How often have you seen the stars fall from the sky? Zero times! I was asleep when it happened. Now that's over, there goes my chances of ever witnessing a supreme meteor shower. You should not wit wish to witness such horrors. Eh, some horrors are fun to look at. Listen, love, when I was your age, I used to worry about stuff like this all the time. This weirdo over here did too. We all did, at one time or another. But I know from experience that making such a fuss about it won't get you anywhere. These bite-sized calamities are part of the natural order of things. From chaos to balance to chaos and back to balance, everything just switches over in a never-ending cycle. Sure, it's good to keep an eye out. You don't have to give yourself an aneurysm over it. Just pick up a quest if it worries you. Follow the natural flow of the universe. That way, if you're lucky, you'll end up retired like me. Such a leisurely attitude only leads to failure. And, even then, someone's always going to save the world. In the end. And that someone's going to be me. <laughs> oh, the youth. Anyway, old enemy, got another drink for me? I'm running dry. Anytime, Una. Are you still running low on energy? How about another strong one? You got it! Hey, the Webble appears. What is the Webble? Wait, no, I messed this up. It's one of these. And then it's three of these. Yeah. Something strong for the most strong-headed lady I know? Way to admit you've lost every argument against me. I'm not doing her voice before. That one definitely messed up my throat. But this drink is splendid. I'll give you that. See, with one of these, your worries will be washed away with flavor. Good or bad. Depends on the day. I find your apathy borders on tragedy. And I find your hero complex unsustainable. Remember, kiddo. They don't build those statues for folks who are alive. Who cares about the statues? My purpose is my purpose, and I don't care who immortalizes me. No one's supposed to die, girl. Life is much more meaningful than that. Anyway, my purpose is winning at cards now. Good luck with your delusions. I apologize on her behalf. It's fine. To you, are you dying? No, she was purely speaking in the hypothetical. I'm not sure what that means, but it doesn't sound like it could damage your armor. 
But you know, maybe we should listen to her advice at least a little bit. My granny always says, which age comes the priceless wisdom of mistakes. I think your grandma's advice would be much more helpful than whatever a failed hero has to say. You think retirement is failure? One's post should never be abandoned. If you can still serve this world, you should. I'm not sure if that's bleak or inspiring. The latter. She was right about one thing, though. The past is full of terrible disasters that were prevented. Which means that this, too, could have been attempted before, if not very successfully. The knowledge is things so vile must be scarce and well-guarded, maybe even abandoned. I've never come across anything like this anywhere in the Aperture's library. Granted, the Aperture has only been standing for a little over two decades. Its library can't be that vast. Many of the Order's books were relocated to the new stronghold. But I do believe we don't currently harbor the knowledge I seek. For that, other avenues must be explored. What are you considering? We could ask everyone we come across until we find someone who knows something. Good idea, but that would take far too long. I think we should look for the Everbloom archives. Is that a book club? An ancient one. Everbloom was one of the first, one of the seven great Maiden's archives. The Gaian one, to be specific. Legend has it there used to be one in each plane. Even Tuat, the plane of the dead. They were once filled with all the knowledge of the cosmos and grew in size every day. Thanks to their fearless archivists. But then they fell to an unknown foe and have been lost to time ever since. I believe one of them could hold the answers we seek. Innkeeper, do you perhaps know where to find this archive? Nope, not much of a librarian, unfortunately. We're fucking blown. Disappointing. But you can keep an eye out for it, right? You could ask all the scholarly people to pass through here? Well, of course, I can do that. Perhaps you could start by asking that bounty hunter when she's done gambling all her money away. And you could ask her yourself. I would rather not. I'll take that terrible task off your hands, then. Wonderful. You don't need more than a day to take care of all this, right? I could do with a little more time. Nonsense. We don't have more time. I need your full commitment on this, innkeeper. This is very short notice. As are disasters, typically. Hence the vigilance. I shall return to a fully prepared quest tomorrow morning. All right. In the meantime, you should rest. Don't be ridiculous. I have things to do. People to help. Prayers to consult. When it was right, a good night's sleep would do wonders for you. I could even offer you some coupons to a beautiful swamp spa. Fine, I'll take one or two, but they won't be put, it, put to much use. If I rest now, who will this world have faith in? I shall see you tomorrow. <clears throat> It's always nice to see the burnout happening in real time. Don't worry, I'll go with her and make and make her some soup. Soup always helps me when I have a headache, and it looks like she has a big one. Do you want some soup as well? Sure, yes please. I'll bring some by tomorrow. Do you have any allergies? No, thank you, Clay. Anytime, and then the recipe will be a surprise. Have a superb day. I'll take some of those coupons too. Wonderful. Talking through everything really helped. Thank you. I'm happy to hear that. I hope you held on to those seashells. Catching up with some astral friends might make you feel a little better. Actually, I was thinking I could use the shells to make some kind of friendship bracelets for Tia and I. I want to carve them into stars. I think that sometimes you have to make something beautiful out of the things that hurt you. Otherwise, you're left with anger that has nowhere to go. Do you like being angry? Wait, was that all clay? Jesus, that was all clay. He's oddly profound. No, I don't enjoy being angry. Me neither. But we all get angry sometimes. It's not the most fun, but it's important. Never getting angry doesn't solve anything either. 
It just makes you smaller and smaller until people no longer see you as something they need to think about. At least they're not scared of you. Anger doesn't make you any more of a monster than silence makes you a saint. Be a whole person, Clay, and don't be scared of who that is. I'll try, Innkeeper. Thank you. I hope you find your way back to... I hope you find a way back to yourself, too. Thank you, Clay. Me too. Oh, I don't get a... Oh, they're still playing cards. Hey, it's Scully. No, I have no quest at all for this lady. <clears throat> Visibility, frozen armor, inspiration, haste, inspiration. Blessed. And fire resistance. Hi, Perry. Hope you're having a good night. I didn't even know I had a map. Oh, right. And they're going to come back with the quests about the uh, familiars that keep disappearing. Castle, the Dark Marsh. I'm doing all right. Throat is not handling the uh, the game quite as well. I've already got to take a cough drop, try and make myself feel a little bit better. But otherwise, I'm not doing too badly. Top of the evening to ya. Welcome to my tavern. Oh, what do my magical eyes see? New faces, new acquaintances. With whom do I have the pleasure today? No way, speak it, Skeleton. I haven't seen one of those in a long while. Hello there. How incredibly rude of me to leave out my introductions. My name is Scully. Oh, and he's so polite as well. You can call me Una, Mr. Scully. The one over here is my friend Jade. Ah, a fellow Amada, but with more skin left. This is immensely difficult, I suppose. Glad to make your acquaintance, Una and her friend Jade. Scully, shouldn't you be named after a gemstone? As far as I'm aware, my the last, last name is referenced their bones, no? Wait, that was me. As far as I'm aware, my the last name is referenced their bones, no? Correct, but I can't remember what my poor bones are made of. Death has quite left a lot of gaps in this head of mine. Let me have a look. Hmm, looks like alabaster to me. Hard to say without a thorough analysis, though. Alabaster? That does sound familiar. Like an old name, perhaps? I'm not sure, but it's worth investigating. Thank you, Jade. Still, so, let's let us stick with Scully until we have more detailed information. I think I should be going now. I still have work to do. What a coincidence! I just ha wanted to say the exact same thing. Wouldn't it be rude of us to leave that distinguished gentleman all by himself? I think one of us should definitely stay a little longer. Isn't that cool that both of you have bones made of shimmering gemstones? 
That is true. I haven't seen another Maida in, since... Well, since I woke up. Something between those two weeks and two centuries. See, it's a match already. It'd be a shame if the two of you were to become friends. Huh? Anyway, see ya. That was quick. Indeed. I guess a woman her age knows what she wants. Good mythical morning. It's well past sunset, Hex. That might be true, but it's still... Morning somewhere, I know. You've got it, but today I'm not here to talk with you about primordial magic. Today we're going to celebrate my sister. Oh, she's cute. Look at her, Barry. Look at this cutie patootie. I like her staff, too. Greetings, everyone. Come on in. Pleased to meet you. My name is Scully. Jade. You can call me Hex, and this is Grace, my little sister. Yes, I know. She's taller than me. You can keep it to yourself. We're here to celebrate, not roast. But some fire might be fun. No fireballs inside, Hexagon. If you insist, a fireless party it is, then. My bones are aching for a party. I haven't had one that feels like an eternity. What's the occasion? My wonderfully talented sister, sister successfully defended her wizard doctoral thesis just today. She can now call herself an actual full-blown selenite witch. It's not that special, honestly. I beg to differ. That's a majorly big deal. Congratulations. I must congratulate you as well. Quite an outstanding achievement, then. You're very sweet. Thank you. Well, I have to agree with everyone. You should be proud of yourself. How about a drink on the house to celebrate your graduation? This... I've been playing this day for an hour. One day has taken this long. Jesus. Hex already told me you're a real magical connoisseur. I'd love to taste one of your creations, Innkeeper. But I don't know what to pick. Could you recommend something to me? Of course. How about a drink for your wits? Your brain must be tired after debating with your professors all day. That sounds lovely. My brain could use a little pick-me-up. Coming right up. Brain juice! Alright. That's not what I want. That's not what I want. That's not what I want. Drinks. Alright. Peak sunrise. So I can't lower charisma, speed, or brain. Visibility. I want to give her, like, inspiration. Oh, this works. Thunder Sage. Peaks Sunrise. My, this is delightful. See? Told you. He definitely knows his craft. Say, Innkeeper, do you have a PhD in mixology by any chance? Last time I checked, no. But I do have a lot of experience. Took me a while to get the hang of it. I can tell. Your drinks are really tasty. I could easily go for another round of debating right now. Is anyone else up for a drink? Nah, not yet. I'm standardized from earlier. Scully? Hex, what about you two? I'm good. Don't want to steal the show today. 
a little bit of refreshment for these old bones, actually. Perhaps something that will bring back the charm of the old days. I'm at your service. Thousand wins. Sure. That's all I needed there. So it's two of these. And it should be two of these. Here you go. A drink for the charming gentleman. Oh! What a lovely taste. It warms my bones inside and out. Should I be worried? Maybe it's an undead thing. Well, theoretically, it would be impossible for a magical drink to warm one's bones. You just need... You and your wild dreams, Hexy. Wait. Yeah, hey, that was Grace. Maybe leave those experiments to someone with an actual laboratory for once. Ah! All that talking about studying degrees brings back so many old memories. I was also a scholar once. I spent my life as an archivist, but the guy in Everbloom archives be exact, to be precise. Before my, well, supposedly eternal slumber. I've read a lot about the old archives, but I've never had the chance to talk to one. Archivists. Well, obviously, they're all dead. All of them? Yes, the archives were destroyed year ages ago. They're mostly a myth now. Oh, that's quite sad. I don't knowledge must have gotten lost with them. I guess so. If you wouldn't mind, Skelly, I'd love to hear more about them. Making maybe we can revive some of that old knowledge. It would be my pleasure, but sadly I can't remember much of my research. All these years below ground and without sunlight don't seem to have been good for my memory. It's been a few centuries since I've been alive, so I'm not even sure where one might find the archives nowadays. Or their ruins, rather. Do you remember the environment surrounding them? Maybe that could help. A little, I believe. I might have even woken up close by. My early memories as a skeleton are quite hazy. During my lifetime, the archives were located deep underground. Guy's lively blessings were juxtaposed with a hostile and lifeless mountain range. They were surrounded by nothing but rocks and boulders, as sharp as talons and fangs. Even if you made it out of the mountains, you'd be greeted by either dry steps or a poisonous lake. Liquid in that lake could singe the meat right off your bones. I knew someone that fell in that lake once. I remember it as if it was yesterday. Well, that sounds like not the best place to build an important archive stronghold. I wouldn't necessarily agree. They say books and scrolls of might and archives contain all the mysteries of our world and the realms that surround us. Of course you have to protect that knowledge. It would be a shame if someone... Anyways... Hex, you're up to trouble. I think I know the place Skelly's talking about. Oh? It sounds just like Gravel Mac. Sharp rocks next to a poison poisonous lake. There's no location like that. That it, there's no way a location like that exists twice on this planet, at least. Or else I would have heard of it. I wouldn't recommend going there, but it's exceptionally dusty after all these years. Think about all those hidden treasures. Knowledge un left untouched for millennia. That sounds a little too ambitious, even for you. Fine. Your delicate wisdom sensibilities wouldn't last a day in Gravel Mac anyway. Oh, and you would? Who can say? Anyway, I gotta go now. Shared enough secrets of the trade today already. Thank you for your reluctant service. 
What a lovely young lad. She should have made she would have made for a great archivist. And a grumpy one. I'm sure she just had a long day. As have I, honestly, I'm very tired. I'm absolutely sure of that. But you should be proud of yourself nonetheless. You seem like the kind of person to downplay your achievements. And getting your PhD isn't something small or insignificant. Uh, it's nothing, really. I spent a lot of time researching. Defending my thesis was a mere formality. Scully's in my point still stands. I'm sure your brother would agree with us. Absolutely. You're very kind. I appreciate that. How about we call it a, gay a day? It's getting really late. A splendid idea. I expect, as I would expect from a witch like you. Seems fair. I hope you get to enjoy the rest of your evening, Innkeeper. I will, dear, practically. And somehow I got all the information by the end of the day. What happens if I put something else out there? You can get it wrong. Okay. I'm not sure I like that. The fabled Everbloom Archives is located deep within Gravelmac, a lifeless, dangerous mountain range. The Maiden Archives once held the infinite knowledge of the cosmos. The guy in Everbloom could hide answers no one was ready for. And deep within this hides all lost treasures, the terrifying bleak stalkers, the verdict is still out on their cuteness. Here comes the town, Karen's grandmother. Banshee. Undead. Yeah, that's the only things that make sense. Raiders of the Lost Archives. The Lost Might and Everbloom Archives are said to offer infinite knowledge to anyone with unanswered questions. Its ruins lie deep within the Gravel Mac, a dangerous and lifeless mountain range that even seasoned adventurers try to avoid. If that wasn't enough, the mountains are also said to be haunted by nightmarish bleak stalkers. That just hope they don't find abandoned archives cozy and inviting. All of that was one day. My god. Act 2, Starlight Sonata. Part 11, Trouble in Paradise. Ninth day of the astral moon. Good morning. Good morning, Clay. Did you sleep well? I did. It took ages for you to fall asleep. I was too excited thinking about our adventure. But I slept really well. Happy to hear that. Tia, did you sleep? She passed right out after she had some soup. I hope that Lady Cassiopeia might send me signs for my divine mission in my dreams. Did she? I don't remember. Sounds like you slept well, then. Anyhow, I see you had time to prepare the quest. Wonderful, let's get started. Well, let's take this one step at a time. Clay, I was looking forward to some soup. Then I hope you like some lentils. I left some with your purple friend and told him to keep an eye on it. Oh, fuck. 
Well, I hope Andu enjoyed that soup. Thank you for feeding my familiar, Clay. Of course! Did you two enjoy your soup? Very much. Clay's quite the talented chef. Even though eating it did make me very tired. And he is a very good cooking companion. It took a while to make, so we had a lot of time to talk. He was nice. What did you talk about? Friendship bracelets. Oh, friendship bracelets, I hope? Not quite. Many things. Like I thought it'd be fun to make your niece one of my little dolls my granny taught me to make. The ones with the flower dresses and mini axes. I don't have any siblings or cousins, but Tia said she's gonna make my star lamps for my gonna make star lamps for my parents' garden. Is that so? He yeah, offered to cook for my family. And I can't offer to cook for his. My cooking skills are unimportant to my destiny. Oh boy. That's somebody with some priorities. But I thought if I were to visit, it would be appropriate for me to bring some sort of thank you gift. And who wouldn't some stars? Who wouldn't want some stars in their garden, especially now? That sounds lovely. Have you ever visited the Highlands before? No, not thus far. Though I've always wanted to. Our snow dragon building competitions are famous. I have never heard of those. Oh. But they do sound intriguing. When I was young, one of my favorite stories, the. Elysia told me it was that of the ever-burning flame. It's said to have been a gift from Leviathan to the first mortals. Along with it, he bestowed the power of elemental manipulation upon his chosen. I vaguely recall there being another version where one of his guardians stole the flame from him instead. Blasphemous hearsay is all that is. We should be grateful for the gifts he's given us. I've always wanted to pay my respects to the flame. And it just so happens to still be burning in an ancient temple in the Highlands. Keeping the hope of Asteria alive for centuries. So I'm looking forward to seeing it in person sooner than later. And with a local guide, no less. I've never visited it before either. But once I went to the Autumn Glow Festival in Varica, you could see the temple from there. The Autumn Glow Festival? What's that about? I'm sure he can tell you about it another time. Please, let's get back to the quest. I have one more question. Fine, one more. What's your favorite food? Why? Are you considering updating your menu? No, I'm just curious. At least you're honest about your intentions. Potato soup. The Elysian used to make some for me on the cold winter days. It tastes like home. Home being the aperture? Yes, exactly. Have you lived there all your life? Did your family live there too? No, I moved there when I was seven years old. When a cleric discovered I was chosen, I was given a proper education. My parents and local clergy could only teach me so much. But my natural affinity for Cassiopeia being taught by the Order of the Starlet in the stronghold of the Aperture just made sense. From then on, I was taught diligently by the Elysian and her celestial cardinals. And potato soup was always a warm reward for a demanding day. So now you eat it often? No, it's a reward, and such things should not be handed out abundantly. The joys of life don't require occasion. Life is about more than just pleasure. I disagree. As you are wont to do. I'll make you some potato soup soon. Thank you. Now, the quest. Of course. Would you like some potato soup for your journey? Do you actually have any? No. Don't make promises you can't keep. Sorry. So I'm assuming you're going together. Unfortunately, I was going to go alone, but Clay insisted on coming along. Why is that unfortunate? 
It's a very dangerous quest, and he's not practiced in the ways of a divine warrior. Could you imagine if he tried to befriend some bleak stalkers? That'd make for a fun story, I think. But if you really want to do this alone, you could just go by yourself. Who would make her potato soup, then? Exactly. That makes sense. Plus, I need to meet those bleak stalkers. I've never seen any before, and I can't wait to find out what they like to eat. You. They like to eat you, Clay. Only if they're hungry. Could you just try to be reasonable? I am. Local creature can be very hopeful. I know they can be dangerous, too. Of course, it's important to have your guard up so you can defend yourself if they're scared. Generally, if you approach anything non-violently, they'll, they'll like you more. Maybe the innkeeper can give us some extra charisma, too, so we can convince them to help us out. I could. I could offer you some honey flowers as well. They can be very inspiring, even to bleak stalkers. I think so, at least. I've never actually tested that one out, actually. We could test it for you. Nonsense. We need to head into this knowing we'll have to fight our way through. The name Bleak Stalkers doesn't exactly inspire confidence in their hospitality. Not to be mentioned, there could be many more dangerous monsters roaming around the ever abandoned Everbloom. We need to refresh our strength and hope that our mortal weapons will do enough to damage them. If that's your concern, I could offer you some citrine. It's infused with divine properties that'll bless your weapon strikes. With a little help from the dragons, no creature should be able to withstand you, no matter how bleak. Citrine can only be found deep within the Forbidden Valley. How could you have access to that? Oh, you know. No, I don't. Anyway, I think both of your strategies could work. Strength and Citrine will let you fight you through any danger in no time. But the right mix of defense, charisma, and honey flowers might offer some more unconventional solution. Can you help us aside? I don't want to argue. Sure. I like the diplomatic route. I've gone that way every other time. So, one charisma. Three defense. And the infusion has to be inspiring. Huh, both the defensive ones... Oh, that's it. Both the defensive ones actually give you, uh... Look at that. Interesting. So I need an inspiring infusion. That's... Charisma and speed. Brains and minus defense. So it has to be honey flower, which means I need a little bit of speed. So it has to be Frosted Lagoon. Not a frost lagoon, a first snow. And that is one charisma, three defense, and an infusion that should be inspiring. Yep. Boop. I would love to hear the story about you befriending those bleak stalkers. Or at the very least, how their teeth were no match against your armor, or your pecs. Plus, this worked well for you last time, Tia. Let's hope I'll be lucky again. Fine, I trust your judgment, Innkeeper. Good, you should. Thank you for all your help, Innkeeper. We should get going now. Indeed, wait. Why are you in such a hurry? Yesterday I met Fable at the farmer's market, and they helped me pick out the right vegetables for the soup. And they invited me to their barbecue on the 31st of Cassiopeia. We need to make it back in time for that. 
you can always leave early if it takes too long. And what about you? What about me? You're also coming. I have to work. You also have to eat. Saving the world is bound to make you hungry. You might even have fun, who knows? I will consider it. Let's hurry then. Let's. Innkeeper, I'll. Can you let Fable know we'll be back in time? Of course, I'll let them know as soon as they grace my tavern with their presence again. Oh yeah, Grace should know too. I think she's bringing her famous fortune nuggets. I'll tell her as well. I wish you a successful quest. It shall be so. See you soon. Oh god, it's gonna be multi things today. Oh, Archibald! Greetings, innkeeper! Hello, Archie. Good to see you again. It's always a delight to see you here. It makes me feel like I'm part of something bigger already. I don't think this is the voice I did, but it's fine. I'm glad to hear that. Speaking of which, were you able to help those farmers out? Oh yes, talking to Fable was truly inspiring. They were so right. The farmers really had no interest in gold or other riches. So instead, I helped them with reconstructing their lo land, barns, houses. With my own two hands! I even got some blisters from it! Remnants of my first ever heroic deed! Very exciting and painful. Now that I think about it, do you have a recipe for a drink that could help me out of this specific situation? I want to be able to help every single farmer with ease. I want to lift the heaviest logs and steal myself with the most stubborn splinters. You're right, a little drink like that is still missing from my recipe book. Let me think of something. Oh, thank you dearly. When I was making my way to your tavern, I walked past an astounding duo of adventurers. A stunning seraph and a massive half-giant. They were so utterly impressive. I aspire to be like them someday. It feels like I'm in a book. I delved headfirst in one of those stories on my bookshelf. Magic and adventure is surrounding me with every step. And unknown lurking dangers is in every shadow. This is also exciting. But now I'm just daydreaming. Originally I came here seeking one of your magical drinks. Of course, what would you like? Hmm... Preferably something that will help me defend myself from these devious dangers, like splinters in my hands. The drink I had last time did... Well, I presume it did something. Those splinters were a real nuisance, I'll tell you. Oh my god, his fucking face here, I love it. I got you, don't worry. So let's look up a new drink. Steals a... Oh my god. What is this thing? So it's one green. And it's a second red. And then we're maxing the blue. Steel tonic! Protection against your arch nemesis, splinters. Here you go. Ah, I can already feel my skin getting tougher. Helping people grow, helping people grow calluses is my secret party trick. Maybe I should bring my friends here someday. Your drink mixing magic is quite peculiar, really. Oh, your friend is he from Windmore as well? That is correct. I've known him since we were kids. Mostly due to our parents being of similar wealth and influence. I think we were kind of chosen to be friends. We decided to write each other's letters when he's not here in Zenith. He's actually in kind of a dire situation right now. You see, he's a diplomat, deeply involved in the whole Diria main mainland negotiations. Due to him getting nearly kidnapped during his last business trip to Diria, he decided to fire his entire personal security crew. If you ask me, his reaction was a little over the top, but I don't interfere with his decisions, so... 
Now he doesn't have any bodyguards, and I'd like to help him. But honestly, I have no clue what I should do. He definitely doesn't need my money, just like the farmers didn't. He's got more than enough of it as is. I mean, if you're brave enough, you could volunteer to be his bodyguard. Splendid idea! I like how you're thinking, Keeper. But I don't know if I'm strong enough, even with your magically infused drinks. You might need more protection than I can offer. Well, I still do, th I still do that thing with the quests. Oh, you're right! I could just hang up your quest... I could just hang up a quest on your pin board. Then some brave adventurers will offer to help us out. My, my friend means the world to me. I would never forgive myself if something happened to him. So you're looking for the best bodyguards in Zenith? Absolutely. Well, I already have some folks in mind who are more than qualified to do the job. Let's just hope my quest rating skills are enough to attract the right people. Do you write a lot? Uh, no. Yes. Sometimes. I love to write stories about cunning, courageous adventures. Some of them always manage to get the boat, get me out of the most dreadful situations by cheating death. Somehow they always manage to get out of the most dreadful situations by cheating death multiple times. But that's, well, writing doesn't really fit the image of a heroic adventure himself, does it? Why would I dream of other people's journeys if I could just live the tales myself? You've got a fair point. Also, it's always easier to write about things you've experienced firsthand. Absolutely! Oh, I can't wait to see my friend again and help him out. I'll be more than prepared. Fable also offered to teach me how to use a bow. How could I say no to such an enticing offer? Getting taught by the Fable of the Ashen Grove themselves? It's more than I could ever have dreamed of. Also, they mentioned their other friend of theirs, an imposing Volkakin named lady named Carolyn? Do you happen to know her by any chance? Oh, care? Yes, I know her quite well. Hmm. I don't know where the... Because I know there's like three different endings for this. I don't know if it'll branch story paths here or anything like that. Uh, she's a regular. A regular? Oh, Innkeeper, you're full of surprises. This tavern is full of hidden treasures. Apparently, Lady Carolyn is bored because her newest protege is on a mission and hasn't returned yet. So she'll be joining my training with Fable. Oh, you're in for a ride. Oh, how thrilling! I can nearly can't contain my excitement. For now, I've got to think of the right words for the job posting. And don't worry about that. Assembling quests for patrons is one of my services. Really? That would be so helpful. I've got you. You have the perfect crew of bodyguards to get... You'll have the perfect crew of bodyguards for your friend assembled in no time. Trust me. Thank you so much. And also, thank you for the drink. Coming here is always a delightful source of inspiration. I'm always happy to help. Until then, innkeeper. See you next time, adventurer. Ah, you're new. Hey, yeah. How's it going? Hello, come on in. This is a cute little tavern, I'm not gonna lie. Wasn't that convinced from the outside, but the interior is really adorable. I'm glad. Are you accustomed to more opulent exteriors? Oh, for sure. But I do enjoy a cozy feeling of a simple tavern. You know, it's good being away from the hustle and bustle of the big cities sometimes. Oh, I get that. Are you new in town? I am. How do you know? It's been a while since I last saw a phantasm here. That's all. So I just took a guess. Ah, I see. I came here straight from the capital. Just needed a moment to breathe. You, you get me? Oh, I do. That's why I settled here on the outskirts of Zenith. This town is big enough for me to never run out of work, but small enough for me to not feel overwhelmed. Yeah, exactly. So you run this business in keep? Correct. Just me and my familiar in this tavern. Oh, and all the regulars that come here, of course. Of course. And with whom do I have the pleasure today? Perhaps one of my next regulars? Who knows? Maybe. The name is Voyage, but you may call me... Voy... All right, boy. Got it. Ooh, I like his music. What can I do for you today? 
Well, I mean, a drink would be a way to go, I suppose. Wait, don't tell me you haven't heard of me. Not yet, I'm afraid. I suppose I should have. I'm the boy, the famous bard. Ring any bells? No. Well, I guess you have to re you'll have to get to know me then. And what better way to do so than make with a fine drink made by the finest innkeeper? You're a real sweet talker, aren't you, Fajor? Aren't you, boy? I I guess I am. Yes. Is there something specific you would like? No. Surprise me with something that'll make me even more irresistible. Like a real Prince Charming? The Bard wants a charisma drink. Shocking. And this works. So it's one of those, it's two of these. Thousand wins, and this is right, right? Yes. May this drink give you an untwistable silver tongue. Oh, this is good! Nearly as good as my musical talent! I have a feeling this drink might influence your next performance. Will it boost my charisma even further? You'll have to wait and see. Let's just say you might want to come back afterwards to get another drink. Oh, now you're teasing me. How about you tell me a little more about yourself now? Don't you want to get... Don't you want me to get to know you better? Hold on to your counter and keep, because I'm about to knock your socks off. Bring it on. So, right in front of you is the one and only boy. The traveler of lands. Stealer of hearts. And the most famous bard in all of Fo Fisoa. I can't say the word. It's so many new words. And not only because of immaculate talent, but also because of his good looks, I might add. I'm fairly impressed. Of course you are. Might I ask for an autograph later, then? Wait. No, I did say that. What brings you here, boy? Like I said, I just needed a breath of fresh air. Short break from the big city. Is it that hard being famous? Not really, no. Maybe a little sometimes. But making music and performing is my job, and I absolutely love it. So it's not a big deal, really. It just makes me cherish the quieter moments. Makes sense to me. Would it be cool if I kept you and your little familiar company for a little bit? Oh, absolutely. Make yourself at home. Nice. Oh, you're new. Hello there, Traveler. What can I get you? Usually it's my role to ask that, but given the circumstances, I'll humor you. Well, this is my tavern. It has come a long way. Love the color of the walls. A new coat? It's been a good few years since my last renovation. But yes, I thought it was some time to accept some change in my life. I thought so. What is life at the constant changing on the shelf? Of the self? How I missed your endless wisdom, Quincy. I can only imagine, innkeeper. You look like you might be in need of refreshment. How about a drink? Yeah, long journey. Surprise me with something as charismatic as your little establishment. Everybody wants the charisma drinks right now. Let's go to the Summer Breeze. Or... 
Yeah. Sunny Breeze. No. I could do that. That would not help me at all. Not that one. Not that one. That would work. Here you go, liquid charisma, my specialty. Mm, this tastes magical. It seems like you've improved a good deal since last time. Practice makes perfect, after all. Uh-oh, ad's coming up. You know, since it's one of Oh, there it goes. There's the ad. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna tap BRB and be back in a little bit after the ad breaks over. All right, we are back. Let me swap back to the game. Uh, so let's see. The practice makes perfect after all. Indeed. So what brings you to this corner of the world? 
Ah, I'm looking for the feathers of a particular little bird. They said it only reside in this neighborhood, or continent, rather. What bird? The Golden Loon. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but THE Golden Loon? They're quite beautiful to behold. If I were you, I'd look for them near a big lake. That's usually where they would hang out. But only in Vesia, for so long. Hence why I came all this way. Oh, plumage of gold, glistening in the lights of day. A traveler's bold. That would be quite a poetic way to greet them. Tell that to the stupid Song of Vigor Guild. And they didn't like it? No, they don't like anything that isn't mainstream. Like subtext. But isn't that what lyrical works are all about? Pouring your heart and soul into something for others to take it in? And only if you push away all the layers and read between the lines you find the true meaning? Exactly my thinking. It's just that now I'm afraid th that they'd laugh at me. Or I remember he's the bard without a heart. All because they don't understand. You know, there's nothing wrong with being afraid. Fear can sometimes keep us from, safe from danger. But something to keep in mind is that fear does not stop death. It stops life. Do you enjoy your art? Yeah. I want others to enjoy it too. Well, I for one greatly enjoyed your Golden Loon haiku. Me as well. Oh, Innkeeper, thank you. You shouldn't base your value on other people on whether other people like what you create or not. There'll always be those who don't get it and those who find themselves in it. Do it for the people who appreciate your art, but most importantly, do it for yourself. That's one way to look at it. You know, I imagined all this so differently. Way easier, for sure. Moving from Tigaran, the smallest of towns, to the big city, I'd always dreamed of joining the SOV Guild. And they promptly rejected me. But! I'm Voyage, and I don't give up on things because... And I don't give up because of things like that. I don't need a guild to get out there and share my music. All I need is me and my Hagum. That's right. I've seen many people spend too much time giving attention to those who will never understand them. My two cents live for what you believe and allow others to make their own decisions. That's what I'm doing. Good. But unfortunately, I have to leave now. Gotta find those loons before it gets too dark. It was nice having you around, Quincy. Until next time, don't forget to take care of yourself, Innkeeper, and be safe out there, Voyage. What does he have on his shoulder? Are those like potions, or are those like... They almost look like bullets. He's got goggles, so... You too. Nice guy. Yes, he's an old friend. Didn't know you do friends. Perhaps we could be friends too, innkeeper. Not yet. Oh. Maybe one day. He's been here all day. Oh god, she's back. <laughs> Welcome but Quick and keep your strongest drink. This is an emergency. What happened? It's absolutely urgent. Relationships are on the line. Not lives? Listen, Inkeep, I'll tell you the story. Don't worry. You gotta be a little patient because Bayer really needs a drink first. Yes. Please. What do you need? The same as last time? Oh, that one was really delicious. I'd love to taste it again, please. Got it. I'll get you something that'll make you feel as agile as a spider again. Fuck's sake, not another swift strike. That is still my only goddamn dex drink.
I'm morbidly curious. <laughs> Cute little guy. Aww, look at his little eyes. I didn't even know you could do either of those things. Anyway, tap tap. There you go, my strongest drink to the rescue. Thank you. Mmm, this is... Good. Oh, thank the dragons. That pause made me so nervous. I really thought he would mess up. And thanks for having so much faith in me, Una. Ah, you're welcome. Abaya, are you feeling better now? Yes. At least a little bit. And that's good to hear. Please fill me on the situation now. I've never seen you this upset, Baya. And you have to endure the Bloom Tide Festival every year. You're right. So, I have this group of friends. They're girlfriends. We three have been inseparable for... At least a few centuries. But now... Oh! Very insensitive to ask an emotionally vulnerable and sweet girl with troubling her innkeeper. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. It's okay. How about I tell them what's going on, Baya? That way you don't have to strain yourself. Okay, so Sweet Baya over here had a long-lasting group of friends, right? Right. They're a trio, inseparable for at least a few hundred years. And they're an adorable trio, I might add. A swamp monster, a banshee, the Mara Morgan. Yes, the Mara Morgan, the wrathful spirit that's known to drown men. I've heard she doesn't really differentiate between genders, though. Yep, that's right. Anyway, the Mara Morgan and the banshee are a couple. So I figured. Have been for a while. I recall them coming by once or twice. Right now, how should I put it? They're in a domestic dispute. For some reason, the two have completely stopped talking to each other. They even refuse to show up to buy his monthly tea parties, insisting they only come if the other isn't invited. Why? I don't know. It's like they don't like each other anymore. And soon they won't like me anymore either. It does smell like a breakup. Let's not catastrophize. I don't want my friend group falling apart. People have always left me. Because I scare them. I don't want them to leave me too. Now, now, I'm sure they won't. Say something, innkeeper. Don't worry, Baya. They've been together so long they must have already solved num numerous arguments. They'll get through this one, too. He's right, they've been through worse. But... What if he's wrong? What if they do break up? What if they really leave me? I just wish there was something I could do to help them. If I might add my two cents real quick. Hi, I'm Voy. That's shit for Voyage. You might have heard of me before. I'm pretty famous. No. Doesn't ring any bells. Sorry. Anyway. So, uh, Baya, that's your name, right? Mm hmm. What's keeping you from getting to know other people? Like, you seem really chill. Well, usually everyone's afraid of me. But the innkeeper has always been nice to me. I trust them. And I've known Una for a while now. Didn't she pick endangered flowers for your backyard last time you met? Yes. 
The bouquet was really cute. I know, right? You had a lot of people in your travel across the lands looking for potential clients and work. And honestly, I've seen stranger things than her in my years as an adventurer. Baya is also really cute under all that moss and kelp. Oh. Shush. I mean, you might look a little terrifying, that's true. But you may just have to figure out how to get through to people. I'm sure they'd want to be your friends. I don't know about that. Usually they try to bird me. Luckily, I don't scar easily. Oh, what a nice metaphor. I'd have to use that in a new song if you don't mind. People hurting you over and over again just because they're afraid? X is leaving you, but you always manage to get over them? It's not a metaphor. Once every few moons, people surround me with torches and pitchforks. Oh! Uh, well, that's unfortunate. You don't say, kid. But honestly, I know how you feel. Sometimes facing people is terrifying when you feel so... different. There's always something to love about everyone. Like my handsome smile, or enchanting voice. Maybe people would enjoy my spa. You run a spa? That's fantastic! Mmm, yes. You should come to visit sometime. Boy, that's short for voyage. Um. Just voy is fine. Do you want to come too, Una? I'd love to, yeah. There's nothing more soothing for the old bones than a nice swamp bath. <laughs> Do you get a lot of customers? No. None. Oh, maybe I could change that. Let me advertise your spa my next performance. I would love that. Thank you. No worries, Baya. Let's get back to your girlfriends. Innkeeper, don't you know someone that could help them out? The situation is kind of tricky. They might need a mediator. And I can absolutely hang up for a quest for you if you want. That would be great. Thank you so much. And of course, making my patrons happy is part of my job. Now who's the sweet talker, hmm? But now I have to wait, right? Yes, unfortunately. Uh, how about you show us around your spa in the meantime? It would be my pleasure. And once we're back, there'll be a solution for your friends. No pressure. There's a millennium-long relationship on the line. Remember that. Absolutely no pressure. I'll see what I can do. See you then, innkeeper. Yeah, see ya. Oh, I can't wait to feel how smooth my skin will feel after that mud mask. You think I could take my crochet hook in with me? Ah, oh, fuck. What is up with my patrons? Mary Morgan and the Banshee are a loving couple most of the time, but their current fight has their best friend, Baya, very worried. That's where the Mary Morgan is, and the Banshee's hunting the Lonesome Lagoon. I might actually have two quests here. Because I have two for Deria. Darn it, sit straight! Have your fun. 
So that's one quest. Tranquility of the Lagoon, the Mari Morgan, known for her passion for drowning trespassers, and the Banshee singer of bone shattering songs on the Lonesome Lagoon, are two terrifying creatures in love. But because of a mysterious dispute, their relationship is on the line, and their best friend, the Swamp Witch Baya, would do anything to keep her friend group from shattering. Couples counselor sorely needed. And there is another one. A diplomat fired his entire personal guard is now looking for new fighters to on dangers of a business trip. Deria seems to be very unsafe at the moment. These are your cattle. A clash of spinal rhinos. Collapse a canal. And that's the only thing I have here that makes sense. Fatal Company. Political tensions ensued when the canal bridge connected Deiria to the mainland collapsed. Essentially because spinal rhinos can't be held, can't exactly be held responsible. The ambassador talk, tasked with solving this mess is a young noble. His friend is worried, and his worried best friend insists he still needs dire need of a new personal guard, especially since. Roads are safe for travelers lately, if those travelers are cattle, anyways. Okay, I got both of them out. It takes two or three. And I think that's where we're going to call it for the night. Because given how long these days seem to be lasting, uh, another, another day would take us entirely beyond three hours. And I can't do that on a weeknight. So... Let me look for somebody to raid. I have somebody in mind. But let me see if we have any other good candidates out there. So. Let's have a CCC. Uh, da, da, da. It'd be nice to raid them, maybe. Ooh, somebody's playing Monster Hunter. Uh, somebody's doing an art... Weirdly enough, two people are playing Coral Island. That's interesting. Uh, I'll keep talking and nobody explodes. Not quite the vibe I want to go for. But it's nice to see him gaming. Uh, chatting. Oh, no. Somebody's doing a chatting stream. Game was so bad. We're voice. And that's all it says. But bad game. Oh no. Uh, there's that. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna go with my first choice. Gonna raid a friend. I haven't had an opportunity to raid in a while because they are actually streaming tonight when they don't normally do that. All right, thank you all for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever it is in your part of the world. You're going to see me again on Friday for more War Group. We're going to play some of that then. But until then, take care, everybody, and I'll see you later. We're going to raid my friend who's playing the original Demon Souls. So be sure to treat her nicely. Anyway, take care, everybody. I'll see you later.